It's a great question, but I like to come at it from a slightly different angle. I like to think of it as opportunity costs that we're losing from not tackling climate change, because if we start tackling climate change, then there can be loads of health co-benefits. It might be because of energy production, so if you can reduce indoor air pollution by using different fuels inside a house, then that's got health co-benefits. Could be about active travel, so if you get people out of cars and stop burning fossil fuels and onto bikes, then there's obviously physical activity benefits there. But diet is a huge area here where we can also have potential health co-benefits of tackling climate change. We know that you can reduce your carbon footprint from diet by about half, okay, and that really makes a big difference. If everyone in the UK population reduced their meat and diet consumption, not cut it out completely, but just cut it down, then it could be about the same as taking about 8 million cars off the road in terms of the equivalents for impact. Meat is associated with disease risk, particularly red meat consumption and processed meat consumption, which we know is linked to cancer risk, cardiovascular disease risk, and diabetes risk. So if we're changing our diets so that they're more planet-friendly, then there should also be a lot of health co-benefits. One uh, possible mechanism that helps is also investing in nature recovery uh, and restoration. If we can get people to engage in restoring nature in their gardens, in their schools, and their workplaces, that gives a real sense of agency that can help people through their anxiety uh, and their nature di di disconnection. And if we can do this at substantial scale, we also actually directly help tackle climate change by increasing the resilience of our cities and our workplaces to, to extreme climate change.